test is open throughout the arrival period. So there's certain times in the year, January, September, then block periods over the summer when we are having our summer school students arrive when the meet and greet desk is open. Uh, from nine till six every day, including weekends. Students can come anytime and ask us any questions about, um, you know, about settling in and uh, if, if they're having any issues. Uh, there is a, a welcome bag given to them when they come for the first time. So the first time they arrive, we ask them to fill in a form with their details so we get their information and we know who has arrived at university. And we give them a welcome, a welcome bag which includes orientation and enrollment information. It includes a preloaded SIM card so they can call home and tell their parents that or their family that they've uh, read safely. It's only preloaded for one pound, so that wouldn't go too far, but there's instructions how to top it up. Uh, and for some groups where there's special arrangements, they can be put with 10 pounds preloaded for some groups, yeah. but then that's where the faculties are, are supporting that kind of service for the students. And uh, we book them a taxi to take them to their accommodation as well, uh, with their luggage and everything. Um, and because our meet and greet desk at key times through the year has one staff member and one or more student crew members present to support the students there. Sorry. Excuse me, SIM card is free of charge? It's not like an offer? SIM card? SIM card in the UK is free of charge anyway. Okay. Uh, it's preloaded, so the company that provides us a SIM card is preloaded for one pound. Mm -hmm. um, but that's like UK has because of people from all over the world being in the UK. There's a lot of special SIM cards in the UK where you can make really cheap calls different parts of the world. So the one we use is one way, you know, you can make a one pence call to India, Pakistan, Nigeria. So. Laika Talk or Libara Mobile. Is it obligatory in uh, UK to register with your name and address for it a SIM not. card? It, it is, is not. not. And that is why we are being able to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some students find it surprising. It's not, it, it, in India, <coughs> you cannot get a SIM card just yeah. like that. So um, maybe, is it not it's in your country? Hmm? We have to register. Yeah. 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 In France, you can't. You have to show your ID. You can't yes. just buy a mobile phone like in England or the United States. Right. You have to give the name and to prove your identity. Anti-terrorism mm -hmm. is for me. Yeah. And the SIM card is not for you. Yeah. No, as of now, that's not yeah, happened in the UK, so we can do it. Yeah. Um, it's just out of curiosity when someone's traveling to, say, France or yeah. in a few countries, do they need to have ID to check into a hotel? Yeah. Yes. 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 Because you don't need that in the UK. You don't? No, yeah. you just need your payment card. You don't have to show your passport or your driving license. But also, a registration card that asked me for the passport number, they didn't want this from me. No, they only wanted the, the name, number. name, mail address, and the number of your card that you will pay. Pay with, yeah, yeah. They, they only ask for payment details. They don't. It depends on the hotels, actually, in France. In some hotels, yes, right? In some hotels in France, you don't have to show the identity card. Mm -hmm. Or just for one person, if you come they, they need it. That's interesting. Is it still so in the UK that you don't have to have any ID, basically? No, I think you don't have a driving license, you don't have to have anything? No, don't have anything. Either. As long as you have a payment card that you would pay with. <laughs> <laughs> what if your uh, contact is stopped by the police? How do you identify yourself? At a later date, they trust you to give the correct information. Seriously? If the police officer came to me and said, are you Andrew? I would say yes. <laughs> if not, that is an offence if you give false information. But we have no ID cards or anything like that at all. No, they just trust you to. You don't even have to carry your driving license in your car. Wow. You don't have to do anything like that. Oh, that, would be, uh, that would be an offence in the Yeah, no, you don't need to yeah, no. no, UK nationals don't have ID cards. Wow. So yeah. if you choose not to have a passport if you want and a driving license, you're living without an ID card, yeah? So if you want to, you can apply and to take it, yes? But if you don't need it? I don't think there's an there's ID card. There's no ID, there's no ID in system in the UK. Oh, yeah. What about so social security cards? A way to save money. That's a national insurance you number. But you don't have your... Is, is your name on the national insurance? You don't even 
get a card for national insurance. Not anymore. No. You used so to how, how do they identify you at the hospital, for example, when you want to have a surgery or a procedure? I give my name and my uh, security number, yes, and that's but it. They from your name and your postcode, you can be identified on the NHS system. What about pre um, conditions if you have some kind of sicknesses before? It'll be in your NHS oh, National Health be, Service record. Yeah. If you give the card, okay. Mm -hmm. If it's your own car. <laughs> well, well, I've got a hundred identities. <laughs> 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 Every day. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have a card still. You just give your name and they look for you on the system. Mm -hmm. But what if a young person wants to buy alcohol? How do they know that he's actually reached 18 or You do get a card. You can get a card if you are lucky enough to look under yeah. 21. And then that is an ID card that proves your age. But it's not yeah, compulsory or like that. But if you are that age, if you are 18, 19, you would probably want to buy one of those cards mm -hmm. just so you can buy beer. But rather than having the your international student's identity card, you can buy that, or mm -hmm. the NUS Extra card, National Union of Students Extra card. For example, if you sign out, uh, out uh, in in the library, you want to have a library card. You just give your name. You don't need the proof of address, the proof of your age. You need a proof of. So if you're talking about city council library, mm -hmm. yes. then you'd have to show some letter that has your name and address on it. But it means seriously, a person <laughs> can come with a person can come with uh, the letter for another person and say my name is like this and. Yes, I'm James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> they, they usually only accept utility bills, so, so like electricity yes. oh, right. or Sorry. official letters from the government or council. Mm. So that's why. Yeah, it could, could be somebody else. But the utility yeah. bill can be your brother, so I yeah. We are digressing. They, they absolutely <laughs> trust, I don't know. Yeah. There, there was, about ten years ago, there was a call to get ID cards in the UK and the Liberal community decided it wasn't a good idea and it's never been discussed again, so we don't have ID cards. Is it exploited by, With for example, na people from other country? Yeah. Uh, well, people well, from, if I was asked for an ID, then I think I'd be at more, like, just because I look like I'm from another country and I'm from another country, but then I can still give my details and they can look up their database and find my information there. Also a picture of you that confirms that you you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So before I became a British citizen, I used to have a biometric residence oh, permit, yeah. but I wasn't expected it to carry it around. I should okay. just have one. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, some students, so students from the European Union do not need to have those, but some students from overseas do have biometric residence permits. When they carry them around the city centre with them, they lose them, and then that's a whole lot of problems. Trouble. So we actually tell them, not to carry them around. <laughs> <laughs> For example, if you are traveling in the train and if you are traveling without ticket, how <laughs> would you send send your seat? For example, you can uh, yeah, yeah. give yeah. false information about yourself. The ticket yeah. 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 For your ticket. For example, you are what, what yeah. 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 And then they, they would find you, yeah. And then they ask you, what is your name and address? Yeah. If you give your wrong name and address, they send the letter to <laughs> 10 Downing Street. <laughs> but of course that's an offence. And then if you were caught giving false information to an officer like that, then there are consequences. So most sensible people would not dream of doing it. Would well, we'll not do it. But we, most of us obey the laws and give correct information. <laughs> the consequences of deception are very, very serious. So if an, if an, if an overseas national is found deceiving the Home Office in any aspect, mm -hmm. there then they can be banned from the UK for 10 years and may never get a visa to come back to the UK ever again. So, so that's serious. <laughs> um, yeah, very trusting society. If we <laughs> carry on. <laughs> so, the meet and greet desk normally stays open till the beginning of classes, so throughout orientation period and then there's an enrollment period where different groups of students in September about 10 to 12,000 students enroll at Sheffield Hallam University so that's a huge exercise we keep the meet and greet desk open so that international students who are still finding their bearings still trying to figure out where to do, go what to do the desk is available so if, if we tell them and in, in the university as well the information is if you find an international student who doesn't know what they are to be doing send them to us and we'll help them find out. Of course, we wouldn't know everything, but that's a place every international student can come to for information and we can help them find it. Um, 
So for orientation, we coordinate a three-day program in January and September. It is changing to two days in January now, but September will stay three days, where we do a range of activities with students, which um, broadly uh, can be split into three categories, though they are mixed and matched. Uh, the mandatory sessions, which students must do, which is police registration, if their visa requires them to register with the police. There are only certain countries, and that's like a Cold War period list, so it's uh, probably uh, not something you would expect that list to be like that today, but the UK police is still sticking to that list somehow. Mm. Uh, opening a bank account, it's very important if they're here for a certain amount of time to have bank account. Um, a health talk where we do talk to them about the um, the basic structures of healthcare in the UK and how they can access it. Uh, in a few minutes as well as part of this session, we'd have uh, our colleague Helen come here and talk to you about our healthy relationships program as well. So this health talk is it's part of that, but it's delivered at orientation to all students before they can register with the doctor in the UK. Also for European students specifically, what would be important is sometimes they arrive without the, their EHIC card, uh, which they should never do. Because what is an EHIC card? European Health Insurance. Yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you. EHIC card, yes. Because having an EHIC or Comprehensive Health Insurance is a legal requirement for free mobility. So, and students do not always realize that. Mm -hmm. um, and that is also a message we reinforce at the time of, of orientation. The problem is if they're already in the UK, they cannot get an EHIC because that can only be issued in the home country. So at that time, they have to buy expensive comprehensive health insurance, whereas the EHIC would have been free for them. Um, and the overseas students, so the non-European students from outside the European Union who require a visa to be in the UK, collect their BRPs, the biometric residence permit, at orientation as well. So it's part of the processes that happen at that time. Then there's the information sessions, which we strongly encourage students to attend as well, uh, which include um, adapting to study in the UK, then the equality awareness, which over time with more people from all over the world uh, being here at the same time, uh, we're more and more conscious of, and uh, we've started doing equality awareness at the welcome session to capture maximum number of people. Um, then working part-time in the UK, and about budgeting, and about UK culture as well. So these are information sessions, very important, but 